Hello once again, this is Sparkster Inc. and welcome once again to a another edition of This Week on WWE Raw. This is a review of episode 1002 for this past Monday, August 6, 2012. Now, overall, it was a solid show, much better than last week. A lot less waste of air time and there was at least something good going on. So let's get started with the WWE Championship picture and none other than the champion himself, CM Punk, and his notion that he is being disrespected. It is all about CM Punk getting disrespected. It's been a recurring theme these past these past three weeks or so. From CM Punk being attacked last week while on commentary, to being put in a triple threat match at the end of the show. To CM Punk thinking he wasn't going to wrestle on Raw this week. To being knocked out by the Big Show at the end of Raw. The Big Show standing tall at the end of this week's show. While CM Punk was not able to do the same thing last week. And if that is any indication, John Cena will probably be the one standing tall next week on Raw. And on top of that, there's this underlying notion that because he, CM Punk is in a triple threat match, that somehow he cannot handle or headline a WWE pay-per-view show being in a one-on-one -on -one main event. So if CM Punk's fans agree, like myself, if CM Punk's fans agree that he's not getting that respect, well, congratulations because that's is what WWE wants you to think. So that when you do root for CM Punk at SummerSlam, you are rooting for him to be vindicated with a victory. With him retain the WWE Championship. So as far as next week goes, I again, I do expect things to go Cena's way. We'll have to wait and see about that, but... This whole notion of him getting disrespected one way or another, it's it's a very good thing. It's a very good development for CM Punk's heel character. It's slowly but surely, it's CM Punk going back to doing what he does best once again. So the next thing I want to talk about is AJ Lee settling in as the Raw General Manager. But I still get this feeling that, you know, she she came out of nowhere to be this crazy chick. Now, all of a sudden, she's now the Raw GM. Can we take her seriously as the storyline GM? I mean, last week I suggested that she needed to interact more with the other WWE superstars, and slowly but surely, that's what she's doing. She By putting Alberto Del Rio in a match with Christian when Del Rio had said all along he didn't want to wrestle again until SummerSlam. Well, Booker T took care of that on SmackDown, and now it's AJ Lee on Raw. So, what more can she do to be relevant? What more can she do to make this GM role meaningful? One possible suggestion would be for her to intervene in the Triple Threat main event at SummerSlam, which could, which, poss which means she would probably have to turn heel to do that. But, you know, then again, let's face it. Babyface, good guy GMs tend to be bland, they tend to be dull, while the heel GMs are a lot more interesting, but even then you still need the right superstar in place to make that GM role good. But either way, hopefully, AJ will be given that chance to succeed. Whether she's going to be the evil GM or perhaps break through and be a very good babyface GM. She has the personality and the potential to be good in either role. And I say that because Raw is a much better program when there is a competent authority figure in place. Otherwise, if you can't do that, it's just better not to have a GM 
at all because that it's just the it's just a time waster. So hopefully AJ doesn't turn into a time waster. Right? She has a lot more potential than that. So on to the next on to the next topic I want to talk and that is her ex storyline fiance Danny O'Brien going from yes to no. Danny O'Brien urging the crowd to chant no, but the crowd is going to chant yes anyway. Daniel Danny O'Brien being tired of yes, but the crowd still wants to do it. And, you know, that's a good thing. It's a very good thing for the WWE to turn the yes chance against Danny O'Brien. Because the last thing we really need is for yes to be the new what? The last thing we need is for yes to be repetitive, annoying, and to be used and abused by WWE fans. So it's very, so it's, so it's a good thing for the WWE to twist it around and turn it against them. And the other thing I want to talk about is the fact is this possibility that. WWE was going to tease a a feud between Brian and Charlie Sheen. They haven't really mentioned they haven't mentioned him at all since Raw 1000, and uh, that's a good thing. It's a sign. It's a good sign of relief. I'm, I'm glad. It, it seems they're not to got whether it was a one-time thing or not. I'm, I'm glad they're not going forward with that. As it is, it's Daniel Bryan versus Kane in a high-profile non-title match with. Brian's career is somewhat at a crossroads. Regardless of what happens, so far it's been entertaining to see Daniel Bryan's career develop as it has since he was an NXT rookie. Whether or not you agree with the direction they're going, it's been nonetheless entertaining. He deserves to be successful in the WWE. He puts on good matches, he cuts good promos. He is capable of carrying a show. Let's hope WWE can keep it entertaining. So, speaking of entertaining, the other, the bigger, non-title, high-profile match that's being promoted at SummerSlam is, of course, Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. And so, and I have to say it, that the build-up to this match has been anything but entertaining so far. It's just not doing it for me. It's obviously a big deal in the WWE, but I've been losing I've been losing interest more and more each week. I've been looking less forward to this match with every promo they do. So Shawn Michaels is, makes his cameo appearance, being in his hometown of San Antonio, and basically all he did was say. To Lesnar that he's going to be at the pay-per-view to support Triple H. What a surprise! Not really. And basically, he was only there to boost Triple H's ego. And we know how a lot of people, a lot of fans, feel about Triple H and his ego. And of, and of course, you have an air confrontation between the two, Lesnar and Triple H, and nothing happened. But then again, you know, if something did happen. I'm sure Triple H would have had his way with Lesnar again, like he has the last few times since he's come back. <sighs> so it's probably a good thing nothing did happen. Overall, it, all in all, is Lesnar and Heyman getting schooled once again in another one-sided promo. I I love watching Triple H wrestle. I love watching Brock Lesnar wrestle, but right now I. This feud is not doing it for me. I really do not want to see those two wrestle each other. So with all the main the main storylines addressed, some of the other things I want to talk about. The other the other annoying thing that I found with the, there's still a bit of a problem with WWE with these excessive recaps. It didn't really happen this 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 much this week, but they did they did have they did recap. Sheamus stealing Del Rio's car oh, uh, twice. They did, and they did it in the second hour, and they did it again in the third hour. 
and I know they're trying to fill the TV time, but it kind of beating the TV audience over the head with it over and over again. We already know it. We already know that happened. Just move on to the next thing. Show us what happens next. And overall, Seamus trash Shane Doyle's car was you know, it was pretty amusing, and but you know the recaps kind of took away from the enjoyment factor. But that being said, like, like I said, there were more good things that were going on. Most importantly, WWE using their roster to fill the TV time. Not just for the filler, but to actually start creating new views, new storylines, all kinds of different possibilities. So you have Randy Orton returning to form, returning from suspension, RKOing the big show. You have Damian Sandow beating down Bodis Clay again. It's, it's nothing new, but it's okay. You're trying to, you're trying to give them exposure. He has the return of Kelly Kelly and winning her return match. So will the Divas be relevant again? Obviously there was a possibility of, possibility of her leaving the, leaving the WWE, but apparently she, by returning on Monday night, she's probably be, she'll, she'll probably be there to stay at least for the short term. And other than AJ Lee, she is by far the most popular of the divas by a mile and hopefully and they need her to make the divas more relevant again and then you have primo and epico up saying the prime time players wwe teased the possibility of a new tag team contender throwing them in the mix so it looks like primo and epico are going to be the new tag team contenders in the mix possibility of a, a triple threat tag team match We'll see. And uh, Alex Riley upsetting Dolph Ziggler with the help of Chris Jericho. No, it's not a big deal, but, you know, like I said, it's a recurring theme. It's WWE making everyone on the roster useful. So, in conclusion, the WWE Raw was not spectacular, but it was a very solid show nonetheless. So, hopefully, this means we'll have uh, more good things to talk about for the most part. A lot of good matches and a lot going on, and almost everything was at least decent. And uh, by the way, the main event, John Cena versus Daniel Bryan, very good match. I applaud their efforts. It was by far the best match of the show, and deservedly the main event. Again, a lot less filler, and a lot going on, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next, as opposed to looking forward, just hoping for a good show. I'm actually now looking, since, they, since this week was a good show, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. And that's what you want from your audience. You want fans to look forward to see what happens next. So that's all i got to say about that. Thanks for watching. This is Sparkster Inc. signing off. And I hope to see you guys again for the next edition of This Week on WWE Raw.